Go. Hi, I'm Lisa Lundy, here to help moms and families who are having trouble with behavior, children, colicky babies. So here we go. I have information on my website that you can download and print in hard copy of white paper. But what we're going to talk about right now is how difficult it can be and what you can do if you have a colicky baby or a high maintenance or difficult child. First off, if you have a baby that's colicky and you're breastfeeding, you can play around with your diet and try to figure out if it's something in your diet that's affecting your baby and your baby's uh, well-being. Certainly, always make sure you talk to your pediatrician and make sure that there's nothing physically wrong with the baby. And you may even consider looking at celiac disease depending upon your family history. If you're nursing, you can pick up nursing guides that talk about food allergies and how to figure out what might be bothering your baby. If you have a colicky baby and you're on using formula, many parents have had success and re a reduction in colic by switching formulas. The other thing you can do, most of the local libraries carry this book, a New York Times bestseller, Is This Your Child? by Dr. Doris Rapp. Doris Rapp has also written other books that might be very helpful to you, including a very uh, wonderful short book called The Impossible Child. So if you have a baby, switch formulas, talk to your pediatrician, if you're breastfeeding, keep a food diary, follow some of the instructions that I have in my white paper about what you might be able to do to figure out. If you have a toddler or a child that's older uh, off of formula and you have a behavior issue, there's a number of things you can do in terms of figuring out what the issue is. The white paper I have downloaded, I have downloadable white paper on my website that lists all kinds of symptoms of food allergies in a nursing or infant or formula and in toddlers and young children. You can use an elimination diet or you can kind of write down what your child is eating, where your child's been, and then look to see how your child is behaving. And certainly, if you have a child um, that is high maintenance or difficult, I would look to make sure that your child does not have celiac disease. My second son had celiac disease, and when he had gluten, actually, or dairy, uh, he would become like a completely different kid. And he was normally so sweet and adorable. It was Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, or however that goes. So the bottom line is that there's lots of resources for you parents. You don't have to reinvent the word wheel. You don't have to struggle. You can find books at the library, books by Dr. Rapp, some of the books like this uh, Kathleen Huggett's nursing book has great information if you're still nursing. The bottom line is babies just don't cry for nothing. Babies cry because they're wet, they're tired, they're bored, they're hungry, or something's wrong, or they could be too hot or too cold. I mean, there's a limited number of reasons a baby cries. If there's nothing physically wrong, and your pediatrician has, has advocated and told you there's nothing wrong, then you can look at other sources. Although, I always advocate that you are your best advocate, and you have to advocate for your child. When my third child lost, went down 60% in the growth charts from 75% to under 10%, the pediatrician said, oh, don't worry but we ended up having a big problem. And had I not been the one to pursue the issue, I don't know where we would end up, but certainly with a child that wasn't walking within the time frame uh, that was appropriate. So take heart, we've all been there, there's lots of help for you, and you can put questions on my blog, www.thesuperallergycookbook.com, and we'll see what help we can provide for you. Thanks, and take care.